Namaskar, hello and a very warm welcome to this special series on Cyber Jagrupta Divas. Well, today is 1st of March 2023 and as you all know that today is the first Wednesday of March. Uh, so we have this special program and uh, today we are going to begin this series on uh, ethics in emerging digital space. And uh, this is not going to be a one day series, it's going to be a five day series and uh, we are going to bring you these programs on different topics within uh, March. So please watch these programs and uh, you can register yourself, you can be a participant in this program and you can raise your questions. All you have to do is watch all these episodes all these uh, sessions and uh, you can be a part of the quiz which will be given to you on the last day of this series so let me tell you how you can be a participant uh, you can simply uh, go to the website which is CIET just uh, have a look at this this is the home page once you click on this events section the third last option is workshop slash training if you click on it scroll it further here is the theme for March ethics in emerging digital space click on it scroll it a little further and this is every detail regarding this series and uh, these are the five sessions the details have been mentioned each and everything has been mentioned who all can participate this is the schedule of the entire series and uh, this is the way you can be a participant either you can simply click on this link and fill up the form or you can scan this QR code and be a participant. Here if you scroll it further this is the website through which you can connect with us and raise your questions your queries the website is cyber at the rate ciat.nic.in and this is the feedback form please click on it and send your feedbacks. You can see here the quiz link will be uploaded on 24th of March 2023 which would be the last day of our series and every detail has been mentioned here please uh, click on uh, uh, the page and uh, see for yourself once again. So this entire series let me tell you has been organized by CIT and CRT in collaboration with ISEA CDAC. And uh, there's a lot of topics which are going to be there in the month of March and uh, you can be a participant in this program. So um, you can connect with us, you can give us a call on our number which is 8800440559. This is also one of the ways through which you can connect with us. At this moment you're watching us on Evidya channel number 6 to channel number 12. We have three guests with us in this particular program and uh, they'll be answering all your questions, all your doubts. Till 5 o'clock uh, we all are here and uh, we'll be more than happy to answer all your questions. Let me tell you before beginning this uh, program we have a very important announcement and that is regarding India's G20 presidency. We are extremely proud of the fact that India assumed G20 presidency and would convene the G20 leaders summit for the first time in the country this year. A nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism, India's G20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding pragmatic global solutions for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest its true spirit of Vasudev Kutumkam or should I say the world is one family. So with this announcement, let me please introduce to you our guests for today's program. My first guest is... Uh, Mr. Yash Dhingra, a very warm welcome to you, sir. Sir is a scientist C and uh, he has been working since 2017 with Indian Computer and Emergency Response Team, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India. He is a part of Incident Response Team at CERT N. We also have another guest with us. Let me please introduce to you Ms. K. Indraveni. A very warm welcome to you, ma'am. So, ma'am is the joint director from CDAC Hyderabad, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India. And she is also associated with CDAC since last 17 years. She has carried out more than 200 security audits and assessments for various critical infrastructure, hosted systems and solutions. Let me please introduce to you my third guest of this program and he is Dr. Anant Prabhu. Sir, a very warm welcome to you too as well. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Sir is a professor and a principal investigator 
from Sahadri College of Engineering and Management. He is a cyber security expert, professor of computer engineering and an author. He is also a guest faculty at the Karnataka Police Academy and Karnataka Judicial Academy. So let me please welcome all the guests once again to our program and uh, we are going to begin this program uh, with uh, Indra Vedi ma'am. So uh, ma'am I would request you to please uh, share certain points on uh, today's topic which is ethics in emerging digital space. Ma'am. Uh, Indra Vedi ma'am can you hear me? Ma'am actually yes. your mic is off can you please switch yes, it on? Yes. Good evening yeah. madam thank you so much. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Loud and clear. Yeah. So, uh, thank you so much. So, during uh, this session of today, uh, I am happy that I am part of this panel uh, to discuss about the ethics in emerging uh, digital space. So, uh, to brief you about, like, there are uh, certain things, like, as we all know, ethics is something that we follow day to day in our regular life. Now, when we map these ethics with the internet world or the digital world, there is a slight variation on various activities. Most importantly, when we are saying ethics, uh, it's basically a branch of ethics, we should say, that focuses more about the relationship between the creation, organization, dissemination, and use of the information. So there's lots of information that is being generated and lying across in the digital space. Now the challenge over here is, how do we use this data? What ethics I need to follow while I'm using it, while I'm distributing it, or while I am consuming it for my own purpose. Because if those ethics are not being followed, there are a lot of disasters that can happen. Either it could be your personal things or for the digital space or for the family in the respective ways. So to brief about as a simple thing, uh, if ethics are not being followed, what kind of a digital chaos can happen? Like let's think for example, uh, in today the digital technology have uh, vastly increased where uh, so many new things we are deeply embedding, uh, getting into our lives. AI, ML is something that is mostly used across by various people for generating a lot of data. Now, if there is no proper principles or standards available for uh, concluding on how these data sets are used by us, then there could be a digital chaos. For example, uh, like uh, there was a case where uh, the AI based uh, hiring system has been banned. The reason is, for the last 10 years, the AI based system was training itself based on the applications that are coming. And since the AI system is understanding and seeing that most applications are from men, it started creating itself, training itself and trying to give a model in such a way that it stopped accepting any application from the female employees, female participants or candidates. So this is a kind of a bias that is getting created. So there are, there are existing data sets if the systems are directly using without doing a proper uh, conclusions or designing upon what principle should be applied at what case, then there is a huge damage that can occur. Imagine a very big proven systems like AI, ML kind of models itself are trying to uh, create issues uh, by concluding on based on the data sets purely. Just think what can happen if we do not follow ethics in our digital space while we are handling their data. The misuse of this data can create a lot of problems. So in order to solve this kind of problems in terms of uh, technology, many governments or countries have started working on the principles. However, to map it with our day-to-day -day activities on this cyber world, let's understand a few ethics which are applicable to us day-to-day. -day. Let's be sure that we follow these ethics so that we will be safe enough. First and foremost thing is respect others. As we all know what we do every day, respect others. From the childhood, the kids are being taught respect everybody. The same thing applies here. Since over the cyber world or the digital space, because of the number of chats that are happening, forums, WhatsApp communications, our face is not visible. It doesn't mean that we don't need to respect them. Since I'm not visible, I can do whatever I want. That's not, that should not be the uh, point of view that we are trying to communicate upon. We should respect others. Equally, we need to respect the trust of others. Somebody is sharing some data to you with some trust. You need to take care about that trust is continued by you. Since the data has come to you, we should not be in a case that uh, we use whatever way it is. For example, you are hosting a website, you are trying to run some system, which is collecting the information from people. You are running a chariot program. Your people, you are trying to collect money from people for some chariot 
at charity activity. So how are you handling that? Your policy states, I will take care about your data. Are you trying to still ensure the same? So respecting others, trust is very much important along with the respecting others also. This is uh, one of the important ethics that one has to definitely remember and follow. Next is do not spread your rumors. Like I was talking about in the digital world, lot of data is there, lot of news that flows in and out. How much, uh, how are we trying to verify whether this data is correct? Without verifying, if you start sharing it forward as such, it's kind of we are trying to be part of spreading the rumors or the gossips. That is again, is again the internet ethic. The way in our day to day lives, our parents, our teachers are teaching us do not spread rumors, don't do gossips within yourselves. Similar thing applies to the cyber world where you need to make sure that you do not spread the rumors on the system by just seeing what you got on a forwarded message. Verify the uh, genuinity of the websites, verify the source of the information. Most importantly, we never have to pretend as somebody else. As I said in the initially, on the cyber world, since my face is not visible, it doesn't mean I can do anything. Similarly, as my I am not visible directly, we should not start pretending as somebody else. As a simple case, see pretending as somebody else, I am not meaning about performing a big hack or uh, misusing somebody's account by performing the hacks. It's about uh, for a moment of the device has been left out for our WhatsApp, if that is unlocked state. Are you trying to pick it up and misuse the data over there? So that is what we need to look into. Similarly, you need to protect your and your family's personal information. That's again most important. How much we are protecting ourselves, whatever respect we are taking at the internet world, same thing applies to our family's personal information and the members as well. Not coming. Uh, ma'am, am I audible to you clearly? Yes, ma'am. Clearly. Yeah. So, do not use computer to harm other users. This is most important. Again, here also the point is, one is, I am learning so many things. Now, to, nowadays, it has become a very big uh, trend on learning about the ethical hacking, how do we how do we crack the systems and all these things. A lot of resources are there on the internet to learn of all of these concepts. But when are we practicing this? If you are learning something new, ensure that you practice it in an environment that you set up for a test or the environment which your course is providing you. But do not try to implement these learnings on the real systems. Don't try to use that for harming others' accounts. If you learn something new, practice it on a test environment. We need not practice it on the real environment to steal others' information or to harm other systems. Because being in the internet world, everything is available in the open. So if you really find something problematic, it is again equally our responsibility to inform them that, yes, this is what is trying to, I have identified, you please take measures to protect the data. Like I'm talking about some vulnerability, some issue you found, some uh, data has been leaked. Being a responsible DSC, a cyber citizen, we need to inform the organization that your data has been leaked, you take care. Rather, you sh we should not go in other way, picking up the data, putting it to the wrong sources to get it uh, made popular. That's a part of the, a good cyber ethic that we need to follow. Do not access files without the permission of the owners. We need to make sure that you inform them properly before you utilize anything from the others. Same applies about the copyrighted data. We prepare a lot of projects as students. We develop a lot of content, materials. Make sure that you see the copyrights that have been mentioned. Try to give a references. Try to acknowledge the authors. If it is really a copyrighted content, you have to definitely ensure, take a permission from the authors. Otherwise, that would go into the copyright infringement and there are legal aspects available in the uh, cyber law. So make sure that you do not fall into any of these uh, problems related to cyber uh, laws. As well, do not use other com other users' computer resources without their permission. Like it's not about the files only. Even a simple device you are utilizing for some prayer, a drive is being utilized. Any of the resource that is connected to the systems without their permission using it actually unethical. So make sure we need to we follow all these things and along with all these, like we are following practices, right? However, if you are seeing some problem, are we taking a legal action? Are you raising a complaint? Just uh, um, maybe analyze certain things like for example, uh, you have received an annoying message of WhatsApp message or something from unknown or a Facebook message uh, some, from some, something uh, Facebook information has been seen which is annoying to you. The immediate activity we do is block it. 
how many of you have tried to click on report and block there are two options always available right report and block or block how many of you trying to report and block it i'm sure very less but it is equally that we are responsible for even report it not only block what that happens is it's not only helping myself to protect myself but we are also helping somebody else to fall trap to the same problem so remember to complain about any illegal communications and activities nowadays most of the systems are providing an option of reporting a easy option raise a complaint report it to someone try to take an action so that you also contribute in has protecting somebody else from the same issue what you have faced and then very importantly contribute to the digital space so as a student you must be learning so many things on the internet world but how much are you contributing as a simple scenario for example uh, you face some problem while you are writing some code or while you are developing something and you you try to search in the internet for the solutions you got the solution the issue is fixed you are you know your project is working have you gone back to that forum and uh, taken a courtesy to thank over there that because of this forum my project has executed successfully the fix that you have given to me has helped me to solve this did we do that contribution did you write a piece of code as a submission to the digital world that is also equally important for us how much we are taking probably the old uh, sentence give and take you are taking a lot of thing from the digital world but how much are you giving make sure that you contribute also which will actually help to grow the uh, good resources in the digital world and then verify the authenticity of the data as we said spreading rumors will happen only if you are not verifying the authenticity of the data you read some news somewhere and you are forwarding it but is that news genuine the source where you are reading the website which you are reading is it the genuine website verify that and then only try to take an action of spreading do not spread false information because false information can create lot of havoc to the environment and if it is about any particular institute or any particular member that can create a very big problem at the uh, individual level so make sure you verify the authenticity of the data every time and then um in with respect to social media in fact there are so many things that we need to follow in terms of ethics uh, however i just want to highlight that do not tag anyone without their consent because this is a kind of uh, one type of new attacks kind of things happening on the internet world where instead of sending uh, high messages to annoy them people are blocking so they started tagging onwards so tagging somebody without their consent and actually creates problem to the individuals so this is one of the internet ethic one has to follow make sure to ensure that you follow the good internet practices and then do not allow your systems to be zombies zombie means what ensure uh, your system is not helping a hacker maybe inside our country or somewhere else to use your pc to perform attacks how you can protect it simply you should have your own protection systems in the system like you should you need to practice the uh, practices of protecting your systems by putting up now proper firewalls proper antivirus anti keyloggers make sure the updates of the operating system you have everything antivirus is there anti spyware everything is there but the os that you are using is not genuine it's not a licensed os then all of the security precautions what you follow antivirus anti solution everything auto updated that doesn't work for us so using licensed uh, os or the genuine operating systems if not licensed even you can use a free linux operating systems make sure that updates are there so that uh, any new uh, malware doesn't come to your system affecting helping somebody else to use your pc for actually performing an attack that's what is the zombie system zombie system means if your system is helping an attacker to perform a real attack then your your system is actually becoming a zombie pc do not help somebody else to use your pc for doing a mischievous mischievous activities so make sure that these internet ethics are followed and protect ourselves in this digital space and lastly online reputation this is most important for us we have to follow all of these ethics to protect ourselves as and our family informations in a way this is something about re dealing with our online reputations what is online reputation means we know every individual reputation and all but what is online reputation how can you find out what is the status of your online reputations basically online reputation is something on to what people know about you through the 
public search engines. For example, go into a search engine, type in your name and see what information is it giving about you. That automatically gives the plot of data that you are actually trying to do on the internet world. In fact, whenever you access any site, any uh, channel, any learning environment, any research center, anything you access, at every place, there are the digital footprints left out wherein the information about your activities are left, your footprints are left, they lead to um, storing some log information which help people to understand that you came here, you did this activity and you left out. These are in a way connected on the cyber world and they are all again connected to the search engines. As the picture says, these are all certain sites, not only this, there are many more, it's just a glimpse, where our activities on the online are visible to everybody. So make sure you are doing ethical activities, you are trying to take care about your uh, uh, online activities ethically so that your digital footprints do not affect your reputation. It can affect your personal lives or uh, as well as your uh, academic lives or your official lives. So protect your reputation by taking care about your uh, activities on the internet and follow the internet ethics so that your data what you access over the internet world will actually help you to safeguard the uh, systems and the environment. So lastly, follow ethics and be part of protecting digital space because by following ethics, you are only protecting yours, not only protecting yourself, you are actually protecting the digital space also indirectly as well yourself. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. And I'm sure all the viewers who are watching this program, they are definitely going to follow these ethics and they're, they're going to protect uh, not just themselves, but uh, the digital space as well. Thank you so much, ma'am, for contributing uh, in our program. Uh, thank you once again. Thank you, ma'am. So uh, now let me please invite my next guest and he is uh, Mr. Yash Dhingra. Sir, would you like to add certain points to what ma'am said, uh, the sure. ethics in emerging digital space? Yes. Sir. Okay. So, uh, I, uh, ma'am has actually given a pretty good summary of the topic that we are discussing today, which is uh, ethics in uh, emerging digital space. So, there are some points which uh, I will add on to that. Uh, can we have the slides on the screen? Yes. Right. So, uh, yes. So, uh, the slides I think are on the screen now. So, uh, we are going to talk about this, uh, uh, th the topic today that we are going to talk about is ethics in emerging digital space. Uh, we can move to the next slide. Yes. Next. Right. So, before we uh, move on to talking about the ethics in digital space, let us just talk about what ethics actually means. Okay. So, I am going to discuss that very briefly. Uh, next slide, please. Yes. So, uh, ethics as I understand is basically the sense of uh, right and wrong. So, how our actions actually affect others and uh, what actions are actually right, what are wrong. So, that is what uh, basically ethics means uh, to me. And uh, this is something that I believe uh, uh, ethics is something that is actually defined by the society. And uh, as the society keeps evolving, I believe the ethics of the society also keep on changing from time to time. So, something uh, that is considered ethical in today's time may not be uh, considered ethical in some future time. And similarly, uh, in the past also there were a lot of things that were, you know, con uh, considered as ethical, but today they are not ethical. So, it keeps uh, evolving from time to time and we need to uh, keep a look at, uh, we need to take a look at the society uh, at large and see what is ethical and what is not ethical. So, uh, I believe that uh, the trust in different systems and infrastructure and the uh, systems that we build uh, around us are, is actually dependent on the ethics of the uh, people who are actually participating in that. So, if uh, a lot of people are uh, engaging in unethical actions, for example, uh, I feel that uh, it, it leads to distrust in the systems itself. So, nowadays uh, we are uh, having a lot of uh, digital infrastructure for payments and all that. So, if there are a lot of people who are engaging in uh, unethical activities, I feel that uh, people generally start losing uh, interest in that, they get scared because of uh, you know uh, the uh, amount of distrust. So, it is important that uh, we ourselves uh, engage in ethical activities and we also uh, at the same time encourage ethical activities uh, in our surroundings, so that uh, we can promote the trust in the digital systems around us. 
So the next question that I want to take is, is uh, unethical always illegal? So uh, if there is something that we consider as in unethical in today's society, is it uh, always going to be illegal? So I feel that is not always the case. There are uh, some cases where something might be unethical, but it may not actually be illegal. So as an example, if for example you receive uh, an SMS which uh, is trying to spread some kind of superstitious belief and uh, you actually uh, send out that message to someone else without actually checking the veracity of that. So I feel this is something which may not be uh, considered illegal, but it is something which is uh, unethical because it may actually lead to someone else uh, getting uh, misleaded and uh, that, that may actually cause some problems for the other person. Uh, who is actually trusting you to send them uh, only verified uh, messages or verified uh, content. So uh, this is uh, uh, one uh, side of it. The other side is that is uh, something that is illegal always unethical. So that is also a grey area and something that uh, can be discussed about. Uh, for example, uh, we, we can say that uh, causing physical harm to somebody, uh, it can be considered uh, as illegal. Physical harm is actually an illegal thing. Uh, but you know, if you are trying to protect your own family uh, at the same time you are causing physical harm to someone who is attacking your family, in that case it might be considered as something which, which is illegal but still ethical. So moving on to the next slide. So I uh, will just be explaining uh, about the different uh, unethical actions in digital space. So I have just categorized them into uh, the broad categories. So this is by no means uh, an exhaustive list. But uh, definitely it uh, encompasses most of the unethical actions that we have. So uh, the first one is uh, impersonation. So impersonation means if you are creating uh, so, so, uh, someone else's, uh, uh, if you are creating an account on the social media in someone else's name with their photographs. So that is uh, like an impersonation on the social media. In a similar way, you can actually create fake websites or phishing websites for different organizations. Uh, it could be government organizations, private organizations or anything. If you are creating any of such uh, or uh, any such content on the web which actually uses the same logo, which uses the same themes, then the, this comes under the impersonation category of uh, unethical actions as I, uh, uh, I have categorized it. So the next, next category uh, is replication. So replication uh, means if you are basically copying someone else's content for different purposes. The first one could be plagiarism. So plagiarism means that you are taking someone else's content and then you are passing it off as your own. So uh, it is possible that while doing your assignments you might take uh, the content from someone else and then you might pass it on as your own. So that is uh, plagiarism. The next one is piracy. So piracy uh, means you are actually uh, taking someone else's content which is uh, supposed to be uh, uh, which is a uh, intellectual property and then you are either selling it or spreading it out uh, without consent. So that comes under piracy and uh, the next is theft. So theft could be uh, of multiple in uh, in multiple forms like there could be theft of money. Uh, so you could steal there could be uh, you know somebody could steal your money from your uh, digital bank accounts. Uh, somebody could actually steal your data by uh, you know uh, accessing your uh, computer system or your network. So that is uh, the third category. Uh, next slide please. Uh, next, can we move to the next slide? Yes. So uh, the next category is uh, harmful actions. Uh, so there are a lot of different kinds of harmful actions uh, that can be categorized as unethical actions uh, on the digital space. So uh, first I have listed as bullying, uh, bullying someone uh, who is uh, of a different gender, who is of a different race, who is of a different color or caste or maybe religion. So that comes under the first category that is bullying. The sext, uh, next one is uh, stalking. So stalking means uh, you are trying to uh, pull out uh, different, uh, re uh, different information about someone from the web and you are trying to uh, constantly contact them that comes under stalking. Next one is uh, threatening. So if you are uh, trying to scare somebody uh, or trying to threaten then that is the third one. Uh, then the, the fourth one is demeaning which means you are spreading hateful or, harm or uh, uh, harmful messages about somebody which, is, uh, which may not necessarily be true and which might demean their reputation. So that is the fourth one. Uh, the fifth one is uh, spreading hatred. For example, if you are trying to spread hatred via sp social media against a particular community, then that comes under the fifth one. The last one is via malware or uh, some viruses or some other uh, uh, 
uh, such malicious programs so you might uh, f uh, come have come across such programs which can try to uh, disrupt your computer system or your network so that is also uh, listed under harmful actions uh, then uh, the next category is unauthorized ac access which means uh, you are accessing some digital resource or uh, someone else's property which is uh, which you are not supposed to so that is unauthorized access and uh, in in the same process you may actually invade their privacy which means you are if you are accessing their personal content which uh, they do not want anyone else to see then you might invade their pr uh, privacy so that is uh, the another set of unethical actions and the last one i have listed as unethical ai because we are talking about the emerging uh, the digital space then uh, we cannot leave out artificial intelligence so uh, there is uh, a lot of talk about this thing because we are in the uh, we are seeing a lot of advances in the artificial intelligence and uh, i believe uh, that it comes on two sides for, you know first is the the ethics of the person who is actually developing the artificial intelligence and the other side is uh, the ethics of the person who is actually using the artificial intelligence uh, resource so uh, while using the artificial intelligence for example uh, we've just seen chat gpt being announced and uh, we have already heard people actually using chat gpt uh, for uh, you know getting the answers to questions and to complete their assignments so i believe that comes under the uh, unethical aspect of the artificial intelligence uh, can we move to the next slide okay so i'll just uh, talk about some uh, current trends that have been going on uh, very briefly uh, so on your screen you can see a graph of the number of cyber crime related cases that have been resource uh, that have been reported so the source of this uh, information is national crime records bureau ncrb and as you can see in 2016 the uh, number of cyber crime cases that were reported is somewhere around 12500 then in 2018 it rose to 27000 in 2020 it rose to more than 50000 so you can see the trend is that it is doubling every 2 years so it's a worrying trend that we are seeing and uh, the numbers for 2022 have not yet been reveal, uh, released but i am pretty sure it's going to follow the same trend uh, next slide so in 2020 these are the broad uh, categories in which the cyber crime related cases were reported so there were over 4000 cases of online banking fraud 2000 cases of atm frauds Uh, similarly there were more than 1000 other uh, credit card debit card related frauds and uh, there were around 1000 cases of uh, bullying stalking of women and children and there were around 500 cases 600 cases of fake news being spread on the social media so uh, this is the current trend that has been going on this is the data for 2020 the numbers have not yet been released released for the latest year as far as the last time that i checked uh, but this is a pretty worrying trend that we are seeing and that's why we need to talk about ethics uh, in the digital space because it is an evolving space and we need to take care of the uh, we need to make sure that uh, it does not uh, keep going up like this next slide uh, yes so we'll talk about how we can be ethical uh, so we can uh, we are going to just look at some basic uh, things uh, so first one is not engaging in any of the unethical actions that i have discussed uh i put down uh, all the unethical actions uh, in the category different categories and uh, not engaging in those unethical actions is the first thing that we need to make sure of uh in case someone else is actually engaging in these activities or if someone else is actually a victim of these thing then what we can do is we can actually report it to the authorities the helpline number is 9, uh, 1930 uh and the website that we can go to report it is uh, cybercrime.gov.in so these are uh, maintained by the ministry of home affairs and uh, once we report it it is taken up by the law enforcement so uh, some of the other points uh, i think indraveni ma'am has already discussed but i'll just mention them again so check before you forward any information that you receive uh, any message that you receive any email that you receive you should always check before you forward it to someone else uh, seeking permission before you actually share others information so something uh, as simple as you know someone's phone number i believe uh, you should always ask uh, the other person whether they are comfortable uh, with you actually sharing their phone number or their address or any other detail with someone else so you should always uh, let the other person know with with uh, before you are actually trying to share their information then uh, there is responsible disclosure so this actually uh, comes across in the uh, uh, in the cyberspace in the sense that 
uh, if you find out that there is a vulnerability or a weakness in some website or if there is a government website or a private organization's website which is actually leaking some data or information unintentionally, then uh, uh, you should always uh, engage in uh, responsible disclosure of this information. You should inv uh, inform the concerned organization about this uh, uh, unintentional data leak and you should always uh, you know inform uh, certain also at the same time. So, uh, I had listed our email id which is uh, incident at the rate of cert hyphen in dot org dot in. Uh, so, you can actually report it to certain you can go to our website and uh, you can find out the other contact details as well. So, uh, in a nutshell, how I would like to summarize is uh, with the beautiful quote from the Bible which says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, which means we should always treat others the way that we want them to treat us. So, if we uh, follow this simple uh, formula, I think it is very easy for us to uh, stay ethical in the digital world and uh, promote trust in the digital space. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for ending it on such a beautiful quote. And I'm sure all the viewers, they have heard this quote. But, uh, you know, following that quote uh, is something that we often forget. Right. So, thank you for reminding them once again. And thank you for all the points you put through uh, uh, in regard to ethics in emerging digital space. So, let's move on to our next guest. And he is Dr. Anant Prabhu. Sir, I would request you to please add uh, some more points to what uh, Yash, sir, said, sir. Sir, can you hear me? Dr. Prabhu, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so, am I visible and audible to all of you? Yes, both, sir. Perfect. Um, invigorating sessions, uh, absolutely wonderful by SG and in the Vini Map. Uh, really, uh, they've made my uh, presentation so much simpler because. Uh, they have uh, explained in detail and I vouch and agree to every single point both of them have made. So, uh, to begin with uh, uh, ethics in digital uh, space, just want to give a disclaimer first before I uh, talk about anything. So, there is this wonderful quote by Rafael Kuporo who says, digital ethics or information ethics in a broader sense deals with the impact of digital information and communication technologies on our societies and the environment at large. So, is it simple enough? Absolutely not. Because when we talk about ethics, uh, look at this image. Uh, so, so many cameras that are recording every moment of ours. Um, is it ethical? That's for you to decide. Because today we live in a digital world and most of our relationships have moved online to chats, to messengers, to social media and many more other ways of uh, online communication. I'm going to give a scenario to all of you. See, I don't know whether it is right or wrong, it is for you to decide. There are two shops selling candies, alright. The red one is a very old shop and the blue one is a relatively newer shop. The red one has got lots of customers because uh, he has been enjoying the goodwill which has been uh, um, which he has been offering for a very long time. But the blue one, the blue shop guy, recently has come. Let us assume that both of them are selling candies for twenty rupees only. Still, all the people prefer to go and get it from the red one. Now, what this blue guy would do is uh, he would put a camera there, right opposite to the shop of the red one, which has got image processing uh, feature so it has got the facial recognition feature now every customer who comes there the the photograph of that person is clicked by these cameras and then using facial recognition and using reverse image search he figures out the social media profiles of those people he gets to know the names of those people goes to this website called Social Searcher, puts their names there and then he gets the details of all of them, the Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, what not. He gets all these details and he sends a coupon code to all of them telling that if you come and get it from me, I'm going to give you 25% off. Okay. Now, whether he's selling it for a loss or whether he's selling it for actual price, I do not know. But then, don't you think he is going to be capable of stealing a large amount of customer base from the red shop yes or no now is this ethical i don't know 
Is it not ethical? I don't know. It is for you to decide because uh, we are all in this digital world as Intravini Ma'am has rightly said, as Yes G has rightly said. And we are all having this problem also with us wherein whenever we keep our phones in our pocket, we feel the phone is vibrating. We feel the phone is ringing. We feel notifications have come. We take our phones out and then there is no messages, no calls, nothing. So phantom vibration syndrome. The digital world is giving us problems which are actually not existing. Isn't it so? We call this as Fox Alarm. So, yes, she has rightly explained what ethics is and what morals are. Okay. Now, what is ethically right and legally wrong and what is legally right and ethically wrong? Like he has said, one more example. During the, uh, the war, the Jewish family had to hide from the Nazis uh, because uh, of the German law, uh, because it was uh, illegal to uh, safeguard them. But don't you think keeping them in your house so that they don't get executed was ethically right? Of course, it's Ill uh, illegally wrong, illegal. So that is one part. The second one is for a chairman of a company, it is perfectly legal to lay off all the employees. But then is it ethically right? So it's a, it's a dilemma. So therefore, there is a very uh, age-old problem called the trolley problem uh, wherein a train is coming through a single track. The track uh, uh, gets uh, becomes two and on one track, there is one worker who is working from the morning and then on the other track, there are five people standing there. Now, if you were uh, the person who had the option to uh, shift the tracks, which one would you do? Would you let the train go and kill those five people or would you let the train go and kill one person? So whether that one life is more important than five or five more than one. So this is a trolley problem which talks about ethics and uh, morality. Also, the, the next version of the problem is the footbridge dilemma. You are on a footbridge, the train is coming. Now here it doesn't become two tracks, just one track. Five people are there and there's a stout guy, there's a fat guy standing right next to you. And if you push him down, the train would stop because he is fat enough to stop a train. Now the question is, would you push him down to save those five people or not? So these are some of the ethical dilemmas that are there. Also, the concept of double effect comes in wherein you're doing something with a good intention. But then the repercussions of that can be negative. So if you have a look at the way in which the organizations are handling ethics. You can see here the digital digitalization, the ethics and responsibility and the data security. The, the numbers are very clear. So it very clearly shows that even the biggest of the organizations are unable to handle this very appropriately because when we're talking about ethics, it consists of a wider spectrum. So you have the living online, freedom of speech, privacy issues, and the ethics and social responsibility and of course no territorial jurisdiction it's globalization all right so we need to keep in mind the misuse of personal information yes g has rightly mentioned about it and then you also have the next one the lack of oversight and acceptance of responsibility use of ai again yes g has told autonomous technology and then we have this new problem coming in which is we are all using the web 3.0 now there is a metaverse also that has come where you can create an avatar of yours and you can get into the digital world and uh, you can see the difference here they're not the same web 3.0 is what we are using metaverse is the newer one where you wear the ai uh, the augmented reality virtual reality and you get into the virtual space now the question is do you think that this is safe not at all because if you google the first crime in metaverse Already, there is an instance where a woman was gang raped by four male avatars. Now, how are we going to handle the ethics which comes to the metaverse as well? So, this is something uh, all of us need to ponder upon because um, Ma'am has, uh, Indraveni Ma'am has rightly talked about uh, uh, the AI, the chat GPT, and uh, this is Dali. Dali is a fantastic uh, uh, one of the first. Uh, projects that OpenAI had come out with. So I just put there, Tiger standing near Taj Mahal facing his back and then within four or five seconds, this beautiful images were generated by the AI and it has given. Now in this case, it's okay, I've just put Tiger. What if my content, that my input was something not right? It would have generated that yes or no. So this is the problem because when you're giving technology to everybody, you 
can't expect everybody to do good. There might be people who may use these things for the bad because technology is a double-edged sword. And uh, chat GPT again. Now, talking about chat GPT, the Bing, the Microsoft Bing had uh, um, also integrated chat GPT. There were people who even Googled uh, how to create a, a Molotov's cocktail. That is the, the thing that the person is holding. So you can call it as a petrol bomb or it's actually called the Molotov's cocktail. You would not get the answers on Google, but then ChatGPT had given the answers step by step how to prepare these. Of course, they have banned it right now, but then people got answers to how to create my own nuclear reactor. So these are some of the problems. Now, the bigger problem is the AI chatbot also threatened the use threatened the user telling that he would uh, uh, it would leak his personal information and ruin his career because uh, he did not accept the proposal of the ai which means the ai fell in love with the user this is uh, something uh, absolutely out of mind yes or no so these are the newer problems which we are facing the, the robot is falling in love with us and if we deny it is going to threaten us it is going to blackmail us okay because when we see the world at large the third largest economy the first being us the second being china the third one is cyber crime now these are only adding more and more power to these cyber criminals because uh, the but two more examples i'm going to give you your okay. friends uh, password so Sir, uh, sir, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you, uh, but we have yeah. last uh, one minute left. Uh, so could you please all, wrap all, up? All right. So yeah. So uh, you have a phone, a mobile phone, and you know their password. Are you going to? Uh, you're going to put the password and open their phone, or you have a pen drive of your friend, and then you open it, and then you use these tools like Disk Drill or Rikua just to see what are the deleted contents from that particular pen drive. So lot more can happen because none of us read the terms and conditions, number one. So if you had read this website, you would have been shocked to see what are the data, what are the information that these companies are capturing. And GDPR is there in the Europe. When will the Personal Data Protection Act come in India? When the Digital India Act is going to come? Because we are one of the world's largest internet users, right? So intellectual property and uh, ESG has already spoken about plagiarism. Digital assets is one more thing that we need to take into account and also how the AI would uh, function. Look at this algorithm. Ma'am has rightly spoken about AI being uh, prejudiced against women. Look at this. We know that it is Barack Obama, but then the AI generated image is somebody else. So algorithmic biases are going to come. So these are some of the things when it comes because the damage is already done and we need to know how to handle this. So when we talk about freedom of speech, this is how I'm going to end. There is a very thin line, a thin line between what we can talk and what we cannot. So 1930, in case if you feel that you have been offended online, or uh, report any cyber crime because once posted is always posted. I'm open to questions. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. 1930, I'm sure I've noted down uh, this number and all our viewers, they also have noted down this number. If in case uh, they have any issues regarding the digital space, they are going to contact you. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for being with us and uh, for uh, letting us know all the ethics uh, in emerging digital space. Thank you so much, uh, Indraveni ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Anand Prabhu sir. Thank you so much, Yash sir. So thank you to all our viewers as well uh, for uh, watching this very, very interesting, necessary and super important program. So if in case you've missed it, please watch it on NCRT official. And uh, this is uh, the wrap up for this particular program. But we have another program coming up for all of you. And that is our Sayog program. The topic of discussion would be etiquette, cyber safety, equitable use of Internet. And uh, let me tell you that uh, this series uh, has a uh, four more sessions and the next session would be on 3rd of March and the next topic in this theme of ethics in emerging digital space would be internet ethics for various user groups and security measures. So that would be this Friday. Please watch it and uh, so that you can attempt that quiz which will be given to you on 24th of March. So thank you so much once again for being a part of this program and for enjoying this session. Thank you. Namaskar.